Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for a community of professionals that are looking to share, learn, and grow where you can talk openly and freely about the highs and lows in your business? If so, I want to invite you to check out my inner circle at AngelaProfit.com slash membership. Hi, y'all. This is Angela Prophet with Weddings Unveiled, and thank you so much for listening today to another episode Today, I am so excited to talk with Kevin Dennis. Kevin is the owner of Fantasy Sound Event Services and also the incoming president of WIPA for 2019. And for those of you who don't know what WIPA is, we're going to share with you in just a little bit. So Kevin, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yay! I'm excited to just hear your perception of all the things that you guys are working on right now, like in the custom world. But before we jump into that, can you share with our listeners a little bit about your background and how you even got started? Okay, sure. So I started out as a DJ, like most people have started out as in in this industry and have evolved. But I started out as a DJ because I was a nerd and it was a good way to meet girls in high school. And so I, my junior- That's hilarious. (laughs) So my junior year in high school, I started DJing and it actually worked. So (laughs) girls like DJs, back then at least. And then- I never knew this little fun little hobby would turn into a full-time, you know, career job, you know, employees, everything down the road. So I was doing it for fun, graduated from high school and just a little bit after high school decided to uh, start Fantasy Sound. I was working for other companies for that. And then I started Fantasy Sound in 1989. And just as a DJ doing a lot of like, you know, social birthday parties and, you know, different things. And in about 1992, my dad still does work for the uh, the limo company, you know, local limo company here. He's been with them forever. But his boss got me to come to a networking event. It was every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. What? Yeah, and I was 20. Why so early? <laughs> That's when these people wanted to meet. So, That's no, crazy. It, yeah, I know. It's literally, and it was the town over from my town. So I would roll out of bed about 6.45, throw on a sweatshirt and a hat and go to this, you know, to go to their meeting. And so about after, you know, no one really took me seriously. And, and you know, looking back, they shouldn't have, you know, right? because <laughs> I was just showing up. So I ended up, um, one of the meetings you'd have to stand up, you know, it was one of those, you know, who referred who that kind of, you know, mm-hmm. like B&I, I guess, got really popular, but this was before B&I was even a thing. And yeah. So I sat across from a lady, we we're doing like speed networking, you know, like speed dating, but speed networking. And she was the local caterer. And so she basically ripped me a new one about like, you need to dress like you want to be here. You need to do, you know, cause I was asking her, how, how can I get work from her? And she like okay. a laundry list of what I needed to do. So the next meeting, I actually took a shower before the meeting showed up and, <laughs> and uh, wore a shirt and tie. And so she goes, that's one, you know, and, and then literally it took me about six months of doing that. Cause I, like about three, four months in, I'm like, she's never going to hire me. Why am I even doing this? And then about six months later, she gave me my first gig and it's really kind of funny. And still to this day, you know, like I've kind of ridden on her coattails as she's grown her catering company. Yeah. She now owns two venues in our area and they're our biggest client, biggest, That's client. amazing. Yeah, pushing it and really ready to go. So I really owe her everything because she's the one that really, you know, vamped me and got me in where it was. But so she called me the record spinner. And so that 
you know, we, we're about 45 minutes east of San Francisco. And a lot of the San Francisco people don't want to come all the way over to our little, you know, wine country out here to do weddings. Cause we're, you know, with traffic in California yeah. after two hours. So she would, there would be no one out here to do something. So she go, all right, record spinner, I need you to figure this out. And so I go and figure it out. And then that's where Fantasy Town event versus kind of slowly evolved. We added videography because no one in our area was doing videography. Then we started, you know, really getting into audio visual and, you know, like do, setting up, you know, sound systems and, you know, screens and different things for corporate meetings during the week. And then still, you know, doing the weddings and all that kind of stuff. And then I just kind of slowly grew my business and added all the different services, you know, so now I have people that just run the video department for us and run different things for us, but it just kind of grown. And then we added photo booth cause we kind of had to add photo booth. We didn't want, we don't really want our photo booth, but that's what <laughs> Hey, it's just another service. <laughs> it is. We really, our biggest competitor in our town had a photo booth. And so we were losing jobs to him. Oh, and, and, and then one day after it happened with a client that I, I felt really good with and I felt like, all right, they're, you know, you, you, you meet with people and you're like, all right, they're going to hire me. You know, you, you just kind of know. Uh huh. They told us that they were hiring the other company because they had a photo booth. I'm like, that's it. We're buying a photo booth. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and it's really not, I mean, in looking at all the services that you guys offer and I love to hear stories like this where there was a need and you saw a hole and you freaking filled it and, and you've done it well. And so growing from DJ to, and I have a question for you about sound and audio in a minute, sure. but then the lighting and understanding how much power is needed and then going to video and understanding editing and understanding all of the stuff that goes in behind what's needed to make sure you have good audio for that. And then I'm assuming photo booths need power. And it's like you saw an opportunity in the beginning and that's how you've added all these services. But then you actually were like, I'm not going to lose jobs. And you took some money, I'm sure from the company and invested it <laughs> so that you oh, can yeah. make more money. <laughs> Funny. I get really kind of not bitter, but a little like kind of taken back. There was salty. <laughs> A little salt. As my yeah. girls would say it. I, I love that. That's my, I'm, I'm going to use that word. But I was, we were at the t uh, special event show in Orlando and there, I don't know why, but I really felt like that show for some reason was everyone was like, stay in your lane and, you know, don't do Ugh. that kind of stuff. And it was very like, and I felt like when I, so I went to one of their meetings and they very much ripped us apart, you know, people like myself that you know have done what i've done but it, it it just was like yeah but i was feeling a need and a necessity i wasn't trying to just i wasn't trying to be a limo driver and a florist you know it's like everything that i was doing kind of naturally fit you know and it's like we get all asked all the time if we'd be a photographer no we're not photographers you know i have right. i have three people that work in my video department they know how to do video i used to know how to do video i'll be honest with you i used to edit it when we first started but I, if I had to go in there and do it now, I'd be lost. It'd take me days or, or, or like months to get these people. Yeah. You know, you know, it's just, it's not something that I have, you know, kept all, up on and nor, nor do I have to, cause I have people that do it for me, you know, kind of thing. But, and it just, I don't know. I was very salty. I'm going to use your word salty. Salty. Yeah. <laughs> I was very salty that in, in Orlando about all these people telling me to stay in my lane, but it was just like, if I would have stayed as a, as a DJ, I would probably be brutally honest. I would not be here today, you know, cause we still have offer DJ, but it is like maybe 20%, 15% of our revenue. You know, it is the smallest, yeah. smallest percentage of what we do now. And, you know, we still do as, as a company DJ wise, we still do about 180, you know, 190 weddings a year, which is a lot for four of us, you know, yeah. so we still do a fair amount, but it just, it's a small percentage of what we do. So, and that's, and we, so many times have clients that come up and tell us that we, we love, you know, it, it's so much easier to deal with one, you know, one company for all these things. We're knocking it out. And I think the biggest thing for us, and 
I'll, you know, come pivot here is customer service. So I yep. am a firm believer that customer service in the wedding industry is correct. And, you know, you have a lot of people that do this, you know, I call them frienders or, you know, weekend warriors that do this and have regular jobs. You mean hobbyists? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I mean, and some of them start, you got to start somewhere. So I really. Right. Totally. Yeah. But then there's people that do it, but do it right. And then there's people that do it and do it half ass. Oops. Sorry. And then, yep. uh, and, you know, and, but it, it's the people that are doing it right. They're going to grow in and then they'll, they'll probably become full timers eventually. And it's the people that are just kind of doing it half heartedly or not are the ones that are giving everyone a bad name. You know, like the people that have, you know, at Gmail, you know, uh-huh. he's florist at gmail.com kind of thing. And they're the ones, yep. that, you know, I always, call yep. I just did a wedding and I was the only one with a, with a email address that had, you know, Kevin at fantasy sound.com. Everyone else was, you know, Susie's cakes at gmail.com and this one at, at a Yahoo. And I'm just like, Oh my goodness. How did that wedding go? It actually didn't go that bad. Mm. The, the photographer was okay. It was the coordinator was driving me nuts because <laughs> I, I can tell. And it just, you know, and every once in a while when I get that, you know, like I'll ask, I'm like, well, how many, you know, like you're having dinner and you're trying a conversation. I'll ask the coordinator that is, has the at Gmail mm-hmm. email address. How many weddings do you do in a year? And she goes, oh, I do like 10 to 12. And, mm-hmm. and then she goes, well, how many do you do in a year? And the <laughs> company can do about 400 to 500 weddings a year. Yeah. And that's just as a company. And I go, I personally still am probably touching about 70 to, you know, 80 weddings a year, you know? Yeah. So she's like, and she just like her mouth about hit the floor. You know, yeah, it's just a different conversation. And what I, I want to back up for a second because right. something that you said about stay in your lane, which I feel like there's a differentiation because you know, we I say that all the time about specific things, however, you have your difference between your hobbyist and then you have the difference between true entrepreneurs who are trying to find their way. And trying to figure out, should I do this? Should I not do this? Am I good at this? Am I going to focus on it? Am I, am I going to grow it? Am I going to put money into this business so it's a real thing? Am I going to get insurance? You know, so, I mean, because I started out as a hobby. I mean, we all do. It's like for fun. It's kind of a just a creative outlet. And then it's, and then it's like, well, shit, you know, we get asked, like, can you come here? Can you come here? And then it's like, before you know it, it's like, well, shit, I guess I need to get a business license. And then people are like, well, you got to have insurance. (laughs) And then, you know, so you don't know what you don't know. And so it's like, I'm not knocking people, but let's be honest, when you and I both started the education that's available to B2B, it, it, it didn't exist. Free, I didn't even freaking have internet no. when I first started. I didn't have social media. There's so many resources now for new business owners in the creative industry. Yeah. And so it aggravates me. And then you have the people who are like, oh, I've done 10 weddings and I'm an expert. So come to my workshop and pay $2,000. And I'm like, oh, how many weddings have you done? Yeah, but as far as going back to staying in your lane, I say that like as a planner, designer, um, you know, we stay in our, we don't rent out linens, we don't rent out tuxedos. However, when you expand on those services and you hire people and you train them the right way to run the various departments and you have help, and especially if there's a need, and I think that that's going to depend on the market, Mm -hmm. to me, that's a different definition of staying in your lane because you, you have a team and you're building a team where I don't agree with people. And I'm like, you need to pick one thing and freaking stay in your lane. When you're a one woman or man show, you cannot possibly be planning and do design and do lighting and do tuxedos and rent linens and freaking be good at it. You might be mediocre at a bunch of things, but I just, I mean, when I'm searching for vendors and consultants and entrepreneurs that I want to work with, I want an expert at one or two things. Mm -hmm. And when people ask me about my team, I'm like, we have a specific person that does lights. We have a specific company that does drapes. We, you know, so, but there's something to be said for those of us who grow our companies and add on additional services and people to help manage it. And then, which I'm sure you've learned in doing all the, the, the decor stuff that you offer, you can control the client's experience and when you're having to work with people that don't know what the hell they're doing, it comes back on you sometimes. At least it has me. Yeah, you're having to, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've moved chairs or, you know, carried, 
you know, photographer's bags or just something to help out because it was for the good of the client, even yeah. though I didn't, you know, I'm like, I, this is the last thing I want to be doing right now. Yeah. But it, you know, it, it's just going to make the client's experience better, even though it has nothing to do with me. I, yeah. I'm not one to sit back and watch, you know, the ship go down. I got to jump in and help. I've always been that way. And I think a lot of it, I'll be honest with you, it goes back to the, to the woman I met, you know, back in, in 92, cause she was the one, you know, she was a caterer. So we'd go do stuff and I'd go set up and I'd be around and we were all friendly and I'd help them do stuff, you know? So I kind of would help move chairs or, you know, move a table because it was in the wrong spot or you just be a part of that, you know, experience. And always it's about making the event successful in the end. So, but I'm sure that's why people love you. And as a leader, and it starts from the top and goes down. And if your team sees you doing that, they're typically going to follow in your footsteps. And I mean, half the time it's like, it's not our job to hold the bride's hair back while she's puking in the, you know, commode. And it's not our job to go mop it up. And, but I don't like to have that mentality <laughs> of like, you know, we'll just freaking take care of it because we can. So, well, yeah, you know, I bustled dresses before I, I, you know, I've, <laughs> I have held a bride's hair one time. <laughs> like you she just, was puking. <laughs> yeah. That's just, the worst. <laughs> well, no, it's the worst, but it's just like, why did you do that? You know, <laughs> like, like, you know, what and it's fun. Care? Yeah. You know, and it, it, it's fun. And, you know, I, I wouldn't, it, it's funny because uh, one of my major competitors in my city, he doesn't work the events anymore. And they, mm -hmm. and a lot of the other venues are asking me, why are you still out here? I, I, I love the chaos. I love being yeah. part of it out there on the day of and there's nothing better than watching a bride walk down the aisle to me I still you know it still gets me and I still get excited about it especially when you've been working with them you know and getting them all the way up into that point and then it's like we she walks down the aisle and it's like all right game on let's go let's have fun tonight and they're all different they're all different and even when they're at the same venue they're different oh you know? totally so tell us about your very first wedding, if you remember it, and then the the latest wedding that you've done, and what are the differences? Well, all right, I don't remember my first wedding. I do remember like it was wasn't until about like ninety. I met her in ninety two. It was about ninety three, ninety four. She told me you're gonna have to figure out how to do weddings, kind of thing. So it was right around that time. I was still DJing with records. Um, and for those of you who don't know what records are, can you tell them what a record is? <laughs> uh, these brown, black vinyl discs. Uh, <laughs> you can't put them in a machine. <laughs> That's awesome. You can't download them from the internet. No, uh, no, I, I, and I still have a lot of my records, believe it or not. Um, but that's, you know, so for me, what's different is, you know, I would have to go out and, you know, someone needed a song. I'd have to go to multiple record stores to try to find that song. And, you know, and for me, I would go uh, down into San Jose, which is about 30 minutes from us. And then from San Jose, if no one had what I wanted there, I'd have to drive about an hour, you know, north to Sa uh, San Francisco and go to all the record stores there trying to find everything I needed. So now, you know, now you need something, you just download it off the internet. And, you know, so that that's, that's a major change. Life is wow. so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. You know, like the prep for a wedding was you know and then you know and then cd started so then we i was like in between because i had a lot of records but i didn't have everything on cd yet so i'd do a little bit of record a little bit of cd kind of thing and then finally i was like this is chaotic and i went you know fit the bullet and bought all had to duplicate my music library on the cd so yeah that that's awesome so i'm assuming like you know your latest wedding you probably so, yeah, now, you know, I still DJ. I don't, you know, I still DJ because I, I still like it and I'm still having fun. But, you know, like my latest wedding, it was, you know, now you, you I am fully 100% prepped before I even show up at the wedding. I have all the music ready to go. Everything's there. And then now it's more about execution instead of so much as like, you know, wor worried about the music and someone could come up and want, you know, I want Michael Jackson. All right, which one? Boom. And I, I have it on in 10 seconds. You know, it just, it's that, that's different where before I'd have to, all right, I go find it. I'd pull the record album up and leave it flagged up. Cause that's what I'm going to go to maybe eventually. And you'd have, you know, I don't know if you remember, you sound like you've been doing this a long time when there was records too. So yeah. <laughs> pull up the little albums and that's was your go-to, you know, all right, I, those are my songs I'm going to need. And you'd always have about three or four ready to go. Cause if you can't find one or something, you know, it was, it's just, a, it's a different different world now. Yeah. It's, it's so, um, 
I don't know, funny because it doesn't seem like that long ago, but things are, they're just so different. But another thing I want to say is like, my gosh, you've really, you have embraced and kept up and have you seen people in your market or just in the industry where if you, you don't keep up with the times and you don't keep up with what the new generations are wanting that you eventually die out? I mean, are you seeing, do you see that at all? A little bit. Yeah. You'll see that with some of the people where they just don't connect with the, with the bride and groom anymore. And it's like, you know, there's a, even a photographer that we worked with for years and he just, he just kind of faded away because he didn't connect with the, uh, the, um, the couples anymore, but he's a great photographer. He's a lot of fun to work with on the day, but he just couldn't connect. And that's the thing with the wedding industry. Our clients stay the same age, but we continue to get older, you know, and right. it just, like, you have to adapt and be fun. And, you know, I'm now at the age where I could be the parent of a lot of my clients. Yeah. So it's, you know, so how do I relate to them and how do I, you know, keep it fun and, it's, you know, it's an ever evolving, you know, I just try to be real with them and try to, you know, I think that's the biggest thing is I'm not afraid to tell them no now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, Oh no, I've done that. And this is, let me tell you why I wouldn't recommend doing that, you know, kind of, you know, and so I try to be real with my clients because, you know, back in the day, someone wanted to do something crazy. They'd be like, Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's okay. do it. <laughs> yeah. Because it was what they wanted to do, you know, and it, now I'm not afraid to tell them no and, and have a really good answer of, of why that doesn't work. Yeah. You know, but I'm also willing to, you know, if someone wants to do something crazy. Okay. Let, let's try it. Let, let, let's, let's, let, you know, let's give it a try. Cause I haven't done this and this sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. You know? So you're definitely a risk taker. It sounds like. A little bit. I'll have fun. <laughs> as long as we're not killing anyone or, to, or no, like any yeah. harm. <laughs> well, and my whole thing is as long as we don't make upset any other, you know, wedding professionals, you yeah. know, like venue is, we're not going to, you know, make the venue mad. We're not, you know, any, you know, cause for me, venues are where I get a lot of my, yeah. they are my bread and butter. So I do anything I can to make them happy, you know? So it's just like, you know, brides will ask, you know, Hey, you know, my end time is, you know, at 10 o'clock, but you know, just play like two more songs after 10 o'clock. Nope. Mm -mm. They have a hard curfew. You can't do it. So, all right, you know, and so you, you just kind of have to know your comfort, but there's a lot of times like, you know, cause I'll go out with the guys. Sometimes we'll have, you know, we'll have five, six, seven weddings going on at one night for lot in our lighting department. And if I don't have a wedding myself, I'll go out and help them, you know, strike and get everything cleaned up. And there's times I'm like, I'm going to go, I know where the breaker is. And if this DJ doesn't stop, I'm going to pop it. You know, it's just like, <laughs> that's amazing. Well, no, and it's just like, it's 11, you know, the wedding ends at 11. It's 1110, buddy. Let's go. You know, it's like, how many, how long can your last song, you know, it's just like, come on, you know, and, oh but those God. are the guys that are not getting asked back. And those right. are the guys that are not added to the preferred, you know, I, I prefer the word creative partner, but you know, the preferred vendor list, you know, that's more people know, but it's just like, and that that's why, you know, and I don't think a lot of people realize, at least in my area, a lot of the venues keep notes that, you know, all, all the different staff members, the, the key managers, you know, the chefs will write a note, the, you know, wedding planner from the venue will write a note, the uh, banquet captain writes notes, you know, the bartenders write notes mm -hmm. and so they have kind of a perspective of the wedding. And if you're kind of a pain, you get black, you know, mm -hmm. you'll be up on the blacklist and won't be invited back anymore. Totally. So. You know, and there's a couple of venues in my area that have been like, nope, I'm sorry, you're you're out, you know, wow. and it, don't ask them back. And it's like, why do you get asked back? Because I'm a, I'm a team player. You yeah. Know, you play, you know, and there's times I don't, you know, like I told you with the at Gmail, you know, wedding coordinator, I don't always agree with how we're running things or, you know, are we pushing the wedding too fast or we're doing everything all at once. I don't agree with it, but this is her show or his show and we do it her way. But the, And they're the ones that ask me back. You know, so sometimes you mean, yeah, because I, I'm a team player, you know, that's, and that's awesome. You gotta be, and I, I, I can't, I, you know, especially photographers, I see this a lot. It's, it's their way or the highway mm -hmm. kind of thing. Like, well, and I'll look at them. I'm like, didn't you get the timeline? They're like, yeah, but I didn't really like it. I'm like, well, why didn't you tell someone you didn't like it? You know, and why didn't you tell someone you needed this and that and the other, because now you're derailing the entire wedding and we're having to, you know, change everything. Cause you refuse to do it, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. It, it sucks. Like, 
so going back to like sound and audio, um, I'm sure you've run into probably hundreds, maybe thousands of challenges where there's sound interference or there's audio interference, like on the video side. So are there any nuggets that you can share with our listeners who are not that familiar? I mean, I've been around for a while, so it's like, but I, I asked a lot of questions. And so like, I know when we've had interference and then everybody looks at the planner and then they're screaming at the DJ and there's just a lot that people have to, they just need to be educated on from a sound perspective for a DJ and a band versus like what goes into audio on the video side. Do you have any like top tips for us? <laughs> I put thing. you on the spot. <laughs> No problem. That's fine. Um, the, the biggest thing is the frequency of the mic or the wireless microphones. And so like I just recently did a band or a wedding that it was a Greek wedding. And so they had a Greek band. It was I was the DJ and then they had a videographer team. Well, at one point I realized that we're all on the same frequency for our wireless microphones. <laughs> and oh, so no. no, and then back in the day that would that would have been horrible, you know, because when I first got my first wireless microphone, it had one frequency. And if the guy in the hotel room next to you had the same frequency, we are going to over top, you know, we're going to be com competing over each other's microphone all night, you know? So, but now it's just technology has changed. And so we all got together and I'm like, all right, where you go somewhere, I'll go a different free. And we all went to different frequencies and then we're fine. But you know, it's just like, so more like going into it, I never would have asked that, but now I ask the videographers, I'm like, are you using any wireless microphones? And a lot of them don't anymore. Um, because a lot of them are just using digital recorders, but a few of them that are, I'm like, all right, what frequency you on? You know? And, and then I'll, you know, and I'll even, if I'm in a, a venue, which is very rare for us out here where I am, but I, you know, if, if we are in the city, sometimes you'll be in, you know, there's a ballroom, you know, next to you, or there's a, another one above you. So I'll kind of go make the rounds really quick and see what's around. And then I'll start asking everyone, Hey, what frequency are you on? What are you using tonight? So I know I'm not on yours. And they're like, I would never thought of that. And I never thought of it until that wedding that I did. And we were all on the same frequency, you know, and I'm like, why is my microphone not working? And then I went to a different frequency. I was fine. And then that's what it all happened. But it's, you know, the, the nice thing about technology now it's evolving. And I think there's less and less of those issues um, when, when there were, you know, when I first started, you know, cause like back in the early nineties, the microphones only had one frequency. So if you showed up and everyone had the same one, you're in trouble. And I can only afford to have one mi wireless microphone back then. Yeah, you know? they were, they're expensive. I mean, there's just, there's so much that goes in behind the scenes that people don't realize. And I mean, I've learned over the years, like my first time that audio really like where people were yelling at the DJ and me and we were doing an outdoor wedding at this beautiful garden and the couple was Jewish. And so we had a huppa built and I have, I didn't ask the guy, the carpenter who built it. I didn't ask what he was using nor did I care. I just needed to know how much was it going to cost so I could put it in my client's budget and pay him. That's all I cared about. Well, I kind of learned the hard way. So like the rabbi goes to speak and then the, the groom goes to speak and then it's like in and out, in and out. And then like these really high pitched, um, like this squeaky noise. It is just awful. And and like the father like stands up and he start, he runs over because we had a, we didn't have like live strings or anything. The DJ was, you know, doing the music and this was probably like 12, 13 years ago. And, um, we, he, I mean, he finally just, he's like, I'm sorry, I have to turn it off. I mean, we're in the middle of starting a ceremony, you know? So I went up, he was like looking at me and I went over to the rabbi and thankfully it was only about a hundred people. So it wasn't like huge, but it was outside in this garden and it's, I mean, his voice just didn't really carry. And I'm like, can you talk a little louder? And mm -hmm. so after the wedding, I went over to the DJ and he's like, Angela, I'm so sorry. I have no idea what just happened. And it was a company that I'd used a lot. So I yeah. didn't think it was his equipment or his fault. Well, what it boiled down to was whatever um, the nails and the wire that were underneath, like the, what the guy, the carpenter had used there was an interference. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I would have never have yeah. known that. So now like when we have things custom built and we have a DJ or we have a band, like I ask these obscure questions. People are like, what? 
why mm. are you asking? And I'm like, because I've been scolded. <laughs> like, no, but that makes you a professional. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, it, it's that, that experience right there. You cannot get from college. You cannot mm -hmm. get anywhere else than actually physically doing it. And then the best part of it is how did you react and how did you make it better? Yeah. You know, and the, that, you know, even like for our company, so, you know, we're not perfect. Things happen, you know, and, 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 and if every, if anybody is listening to us that thinks they're perfect, they're lying to themselves because, you know, it's no matter what you do and no matter how hard you try, something will always happen. And so when something happens in our company, I go back, all right, how, what do we learn? How do we fix it? And how will this never happen again? Yeah. You know, and those are kind of where I go with anything, you know, and we take our lumps, you know, it's just like, yeah, we, we, we did not li leave up to our expectations and we, you know, we, if we have to give them back money, we will, or, you know, it's very rare that, that we ever have to do that kind of stuff, but I think you got to own it. And I never like it when people don't own their, you know, like that, that DJ, I am sorry. I don't know what, ha you know, and, and you felt probably because you had a relationship with them, you felt yeah. it, yeah, he's, he's telling me the truth and he's not pulling a fast one over on me kind of thing, yeah. you know, but he also, owned it. He, you know, he didn't play the blame game right away. Oh, it was this fault. It was that fault. That's why it didn't work. You know, he's, you know, he felt bad. You can tell, yeah. you know, and that's, that's, I think that's the approach is when some, you know, something happens, you know, we're human. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's inevitable. Own it right away. Yeah. Do you, I know that you guys do co some coordination. And so when you are, when your company is in charge of all of these things, do you try and find it helpful to do a call or a zoom call or put everybody on the same email prior to, so that, like you said, you know, one preparation for the DJ is getting all the music and getting everything together for the program. But in terms of talking prior to with all the people who need power and all the people that need sound, do you try to coordinate that prior to, or just doing it on the day of is fine? Oh no, it's well, if it's a venue we work at all the time and if it's, if it's, you know, creative partners that we work with a lot, then it's not, there's no, it, you know, we all know, I know what everyone's doing and we're all good. But if it's, you know, a bunch of new people or people I don't know, or it's a venue we've never worked or, you know, like all of a sudden, you know, I'm in wine country here, but all of a sudden ranch weddings are becoming the thing out here. And if it, you know, and I am in a rural area a little bit out, even though we're close to San Francisco, there are a lot of barns and these people at barns are seeing their, you know, cash for these bar, you know, they're like, Oh, I can make money off of my hundred year old barn sitting in my, mm -hmm. you know, been on my property been in my family forever. And all of a sudden, you know, so th those kind of things now are bringing in, you know, cause they're not thinking about the electricity. They're not thinking about bathrooms. They're not thinking about, you know, everything that goes involved. You know, I just did a wedding about a month ago now, and it was probably one of this bride and I just connected and I don't know. I mean, like I, she was telling me about her urinary tract infection that she had, um, uh, you know, and all this, I mean, her mom's like, you two are like, she goes, you know, I was like her big brother, I, I think is what it was. Her and I were buddies. And then at one point we were at the rehearsal and I was like, I was like, where is she? She needs to go to the bathroom. She hasn't gone to the bathroom. She told me she had to go. And then her, her fiance, you know, they weren't married yet. He's like, you too. I don't understand. I was like, I, she tells me what she needs and I'm just going to take care of her. But that oh. wedding, you have to rent everything. I mean, it was one of the bigger rental bills I've had. Cause I mean, from plateware to glassware to bathrooms, to, you know, electricity to the kitchen, you know, we had to bring in rental items for the caterer to do their job. You know, and it, mm -hmm. that wedding cost them more if they would have went to the, the most expensive wedding venue in our area. But this bride wanted a ranch wedding. You know, she wanted mm -hmm. a barn and she, and what she wanted and it just, and she got it, but it came with a price. And that's the other thing. I think some people think it, it's cheaper to do some of these things and it's like, no, it's more expensive, you know? Yeah. It's like, there's a really good coordinator out here that I know that she kind of specializes in um, doing weddings you know, at, at people's homes, you know, and, and people don't realize, Oh, I'll just do it at the house. It'll be cheaper. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, how much more it costs. And there's so much more, you know, where are you going to put all the cars? Where are you going to put the people? Where are people going to go to the bathroom? Where, you know, it's just like, you don't think of all that stuff, you know, and you don't have, maybe you don't have all the electricity in the house, everything you need to make it go. 
So yeah. it's in something you said, it's funny because in Nashville, where I'm from, the real estate and just the town has just been booming. And so the exact same thing where people are like, oh, I have a farm or a barn or I want to make money off of this. And for me personally, it actually has created a very nice revenue stream of consulting. So we probably get two a week inquiring about venue consulting because they either have a property or they have an investor and they bought property. And now they're like, can you meet with us and go over the plans? And it is crazy to me because these people will invest so much money. And then I'll come in like right before they start breaking ground or they've laid the foundation and I'm looking around, I'm like, okay, well, where's load in? Where's load out? Where's the vendors going to put their stuff? You're building a stage, but why are you, you know, there's just so many things. I mean, if they think about the guest and that's great. And then I'm like, well, how else are you going to make revenue? And, and they're like, well, how much do you think I should charge? And what do you think? I'm like, well, I need to know like what you need to make to be profitable. And you know, what are your goals and what are your needs? You know, it's just, it's, like completely crazy to me that people go into these venue excursions and then they don't know what well, they don't know what they don't know. And some of them, like we recently had a couple, I mean, they just completely pulled out. They were, I mean, I, I'm still shocked because we spent so much time and so many revisions and they're like, this is way over our head. Like this, actually, we wanted to build this for our retirement and rent it out. And it's just becoming way too overwhelming. And they're like, we're going to sell our house and travel instead because <laughs> they were both retired. And I'm like, it's a lot of, it's one thing to be an investor, but it's another thing to rent your home or your farm or something that means something to your family. Because let me just tell you, people don't give a shit. And when they're drunk, they really don't give a shit. <laughs> And they've real, I mean, we've had septic tanks blow up. We've had our yard people out there, like getting the yard fixed for the next weekend. And then they run over a beer bottle and then it just ruined a $20,000 John Deere tractor. You know, it's just like people don't, they don't know what they don't know. And unfortunately, or, some, or they run the way. In the tent and hits a, you know, a, a sprinkler. And then all of a sudden you got water everywhere. Yep. yep. It's crazy. hours before the wedding. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. So something that I noticed on your website, you mentioned just being all about customer service. And so when going to fantasysound.com, I noticed a couple of things that I think are really um, on the forefront. And I'm just wondering what your results have been. And there's two things. You have a call to action at the top about the next event services showcase and what does that mean? I guess that's a like show, a bridal show. And it's just like, join us. And it's shaking and it's like talking. So do you feel like doing little animations with your call to action buttons is, has, have you seen an increase in clicking? So if you scroll up, you'll notice it always stays there. So that's called uh -huh. a little plugin that you get for your website, yep. a little app kind of thing called Hello Bar. And so it's, um, so we use it to get people to come to our showcases. So what we do is we set up a lot of our lighting, our gear in our warehouse. So our brides, cause we don't have, I mean, we have an 8,000 square foot, you know, building, but we don't have enough room to have all our gear set up all the time, you know, like a showroom kind of thing. Um, so we do this every other month. We don't do them in the, in the summer months. And, but what we do is, they can come through the warehouse, they walk through, they can stand underneath the chandeliers, they get an idea of what things look like, like set up in person, not on Pinterest, not on our website, you know, like they get a really good feel of it. We also have all our staff here. Oh, excuse me. All our DJs are here. Our photo booth is set up. Our videography team is here, you know, so it's just That's awesome. all our staff, it, you know, because some people go, oh, I don't know which DJ I want. Well, this is the one event that you're going to be able to meet them all at one time without having to do individual like Zoom meetings or phone meetings or, you know, come in and, you know, meetings in the office kind of thing. So it's a way to knock out a lot of stuff. And we've been, um, we used to do them on Saturday morning. Um, and we used to do showcases and they were just in our office and people would come sit, we'd hand them an iPad and, um, you know, we did those for about five years and we'd have 
successful ones and not so successful ones. And then we moved to our new building and I was like, this is what I want to do. <laughs> and I came up, so we changed it from a meet and greet to a showcase and then we set up all our gear and it's kind of a pain, you know, it's like setting up a, a, yeah. an event in our warehouse, you know, cause we gotta, we gotta drape all the shelves to make it look pretty, but that's a good way to show up all the, all the drapery. So we do, you know, like 10 feet of this color, 10 feet of that color, you know, and then kind of, create, you know, kind of little vignettes, but not real vignettes because we don't have like, you know, flatware or any of that kind of stuff on or in tables or flowers or any of that kind of stuff. It's just all about us. You know, we don't bring in any other, you know, creative partners. It's just, just the time for our clients to come and get, you know, one-on-one and get dirty with us. And we've learned doing them in sessions too. So we do a 6.30, 7.30 and 8.30 session. And we used to kind of like do a little Hey, walk in and I give a little introduction, introduce everyone. And now we just kind of make it flow. It, it just kind of flows. Everyone kind of comes and I think we've kind of found our, our way with it. And it's been very successful with us, but that, that, but that's always there. So wherever you go and it, it's a good way to drive people to that. And what was the other one you had? I'm sorry. Oh, so, well, and by the way, I love that. Like, that's awesome. Um, and then you have the customer service agent pop-up. Oh yeah. 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 I don't know, like we've been, um, we've built out a lot of things with bots and I feel like the event industry really hasn't caught on to that yet, but I know a few e-commerce companies that I've done consulting with, they have, um, the pop-ups and then the, also like the cart abandonment bots and all that. And so I'm just wondering what has your, what have you learned with it? Do you feel like your booking rate is higher now that you have that customer service agent and is it 24 seven or do you have hours? Like what has your experience been with it? So that'll only pop up when we're in the office because okay. uh, Kevin's crazy. And when he first got it, it's like any new tool you, you make it work. So I had it always working on my phone. So oh, in the, Oh God, <laughs> no, I, you know, and I'm drinking a glass of wine at home with my wife. And next thing you know, a client wants to talk to me uh -huh. and I'm like, oh. you know, and I, so I, I learned that that wasn't a good way to go about it right away. But um, yeah, only when our office is open, you know, and um, we, uh, you know, when, when do brides or, or couples plan their weddings when they're at work, you know, so, so that is a good way to, you know, talk to us without having, uh, you know, get on a phone, have to do email or do any of that kind of stuff. It's been very successful. We've, we've had it now, I want to say four or five years. It, and it's, it's another plugin for the website called live chat. Uh -huh. And it's been very, we've been very, I mean, we've had conversations with, you know, a bride that have lasted, they start in the morning and they, you know, you talk to them a little bit here, a little bit there. And literally at the end of the day, the girls are like, okay, we're getting ready to close up, you know, and, and leave for the day. Is there any other questions I can answer you? I mean, literally we've had seven hour, you know, conversations. They weren't, you know, constant going back and forth, but you know, I mean, we've had that happen more than, you know, more than a handful of times. It's, it's really crazy, but we've booked some really big pieces of business from having that because people, you know, our, our clients now want instant gratification. They want to know, you know, they want an answer to a question now. And so we even started using uh, the texting app too. Mm -hmm. And now you can text and, and we were able to set that up with like, you know, you set that up without of office, but our girls are texting, live chatting, you know, we're trying to make it, make ourselves accessible to the clients as much as possible, you know, and that's, yeah. And it's been very, you know, texting took a little bit of time uh, to get going, but now that it's going, it's been, you know, yeah, you know, the girls are constantly texting with clients and I love it because it, it the, you know, it, it, it keeps track of the whole conversation. So you can go back when a client goes, Oh no, you didn't say that. Oh yeah, here it is. You know, <laughs> screenshot it. Here it is. Yeah. You know, no, it's been very successful. Very happy with it. So you have probably, I mean, it sounds like the ROI on it in having a real person available to answer those questions rather than a bot just trying to figure out and respond has been very, very useful for the, your business growth. So that's amazing. Like I said, customer service in the wedding industry is horrible. And that's, I mean, mm -hmm. I, in my area, I would put, I have three girls that work for me in the office and I'd put those three girls up to anybody, you know, they, they, yeah. they're fast and that's, you know, that's things we hear. You'll see it in our reviews. It's like, you know, the girls get mentioned in the reviews cause you know, they're, they're dealing with the clients more than we are, you know, even, even though that there are clients, but they're talking to them cause they're, you know, 
brides sometimes you know they're, they're, uh, the girls will go oh i talked to the same bride 12 times today you know it's just like <laughs> that happens you know yeah yeah sometimes they have questions you know and so in but we hear you know that oh yeah no i tried to talk to this company they're a little bit less than you guys but they don't get back to me they don't respond to my emails mm-hmm. so and so that's the other thing it's just be be true to who you are and and that's one way we as a company make ourselves stand out is providing yeah. excellent customer service. So, well, and I, my next question for you is going to say like, what challenges do you see in the industry now that, I mean, there's just so much changing, but I think even from when we started to now, it's still facing the same challenge in customer service and how to keep yeah. up. Well, and it's, it's because now it's like how they don't want, they want to talk to you on their phone and they want it, you know, it's like, you know, they're changing and you can't force them. I would, I get more done on, on a phone, you know, give me a phone call and I'd get more done personally on a phone call than I could through an email. Cause I have to read, you know, I always joke English is not my first language. You know, I was never, English was never my, my strong suit in high school and um, you know, or growing up. And so I have to reread my emails a hundred, you know, not a hundred times, but a bunch of times yeah. before I out. So I could, I could verbalize what I need to do so much quicker than I could write it, you know? So for me, that's the way, but I mean, even now, like our clients, we have clients that just text messages only, you know, yeah. and that's how we get a lot of stuff done is they, and they have them flagged in our software that say, Oh, they're, you know, this bride prefers to talk via text. Mm-hmm. You know? And, you know, so you gotta, gotta adapt or die. You really do. Yeah. You really have to figure it out or you're going to fade away. Like, you know, some of my really good friends, you know, in the industry have just kind of faded out. So you got to adapt or die. Yeah. There's a service called, which you sound like you love plugins. I do too. Um, there's a video service called Bomb Bomb, like B-O-M-B, B-O-M-B. And so it's video emailing. And so we ask people on our intake forms, like, how do you want to be communi- communicated with email, text, phone? You know, we schedule everything typically on the phone. Because now we do it on Zoom because we record everything because people have amnesia sometimes. I don't know. They just forget. Um, but it's it's a really great little plug-in. Um, well, I'm going to check that out. I've never heard of that one. That sounds like a fun thing to do. The girls yeah. Yeah. It's, it's newer. We've had it for several months, but it's a you can get a plug-in and just do video emails and it you get all the analytics too. And it tells you when they opened it, if they forward it, how long they've watched it, how many times they've watched it. Um, and it, it's just another way of also just standing out and being more personable. Yeah. Um, so it's worked really well. And the analytics, I love that stuff. Do you, do you know black Pearl? No, what's that? The so black Pearl is a cool, like little plugin you can put on your email. So, and then what it does, it, it, it changes. So you no longer have to ever have a signature on your email. It automatically does a signature for you. Okay. And then what we have it set up too is like our initial, if I ever sent anyone an email brand new, it almost looks like letterhead because it has our logo oh, on the top. It has a cool. fancy signature. But the analytics on the bottom are really cool because it's a bunch of little, you know, here's the Instagram button. Here's the Facebook button. Here's the Pinterest button. And then you can go back and look and see how many times people have clicked on that through your email. Oh my God. I have to so get that. Like we use Infusionsoft for um, like client emails and email marketing and things like that, but it doesn't do that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, it's just, it's a little, I think it's like I, we pay $15 a month for it and but it's worth it. Oh yeah. Just, just to know where people are clicking, you know, and it makes your, it makes your emails look fancy, you know, yeah. but we, we have our setup to where it looks fancy the first time. And then anytime, you know, you're, you start responding back and forth, it just does the signature on the bottom period. That's awesome. So I'm going to change gears really quick for our audience, because I do want you to share how networking and being involved in, cause earlier we had talked about, WIPA and NACE. And I know you're the upcoming president of WIPA. And for those new people who are listening, if you'll tell them what WIPA and NACE is and how you being involved has probably helped your business evolve. Sure. So I, I'll start. There's a lot of great wedding and event industries out there. Um, you need to find one or two that work for you and then dedicate yourselves to those industries. So when I went through that, for me, it was, I, I decided NACE 
And I tried them all, like MPI. I tried, uh, I what was ISIS back in the day, now ILEA, you know, and, and there's even a couple local ones in my area. I tried a bunch of different ones. And for me, I connected most with my NACE group here. And then I connected with the WIPA folks. And, um, and so I was kind of, WIPA started here in um, Northern California and has grown now to all over, you know, well, hopefully if, if our Spain chapter does open soon, we'll have a chapter in Spain. But um, I was very fortunate um, four years ago, I was the national president of WIPA and then WIPA decided to go international. And so now I'm back and I'm going to be the international president of WIPA. So WIPA is very much my little baby. So it's Wedding International Professionals Association. Awesome. And uh, I, when I was the national president, we, we only had like, you know, when I, I, when I took it over, we only had a hundred and something members and, and most of it was in uh, California. And then when I finished my presidency, we had chapters in Phoenix, we had a chapter in Atlanta, a chapter in Vegas, a chapter in Northern California and Southern California. And so it, it's very funny because Atlanta has been with us forever, but they're so far East, you know, and they were kind of the first to, to take on a WIPA in their area um, you know, they were early adopters, so to speak. But then now, you know, now that I'm coming back, it's, you know, we have chapters in New York, Chicago, um, Philadelphia, um, you know, Utah is really strong. And our strongest chapter of all is Colorado. Um, our Colorado chapter has taken WIPA to another level, like beyond what I think anybody ever imagined. Have you ever been to an engaged conference? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So they do like little mini engage conferences four That's times cool. a year. But it's like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, their events are over the top and our other chapters are just like how there's no way we can do this. How can we, you know, they're just really pushing the envelope and it's amazing, but you know, and there's chapters popping up. There's interest. There's a, a really good gentleman. Uh, his name is Paul Rumor. He, he, he's, is our chapter informations person. And he's, I mean, he was just in Toronto last week. Uh, you know, we, tr they're interested in having a chapter uh, next week. He'll be in uh, Washington, DC. You know, they're, they're interested in starting a chapter there. They're talking in the, in the Tampa Bay, uh, St. Petersburg area, you know, Southern, or Southern, you know, down in Miami by Hollywood, Florida area, you know, so they're, you know, and Melbourne, Australia is another one. Ireland um, was another one that's been interested. Uh, London, we've had an interest to go to London. So it's kind of, it, it's been a very interesting and growing experience because the wedding community is, they want to be educated, you know, and that's what the cool thing is, is I think when it started out is about, you know, raising the bar of the wedding industry and kind of only talking to the upper, you know, the upper like 10, 5% of the, of the wedding industry, you know, you were the upper class, so to speak of the wedding industry, you were a WIPA member. And now it's about, you know, you, it's still, it's kind of, you know, it's a little harder to become a WIPA member. You have to be in business for three years until you become a full fledged bit, you know, WIPA member and, mm -hmm. you know, rights and be on a board and all that kind of stuff. But it's about raising the bar and just whip is about like community, having a network and about education. And, you know, and so that's why these chapters do events four times a year, you know, and like they're, they're just booming, you know, and it, it's fun. I love going to the chapters. Um, for me, it's been the greatest education because, you know, you're in your own little world over there and, you know, and I'm in my own little world here in California, but when you get outside your world and see the wedding industry mm -hmm. in, you know, in other communities, you know, and it's just like, the, like when I would go to the Phoenix chapter to their meetings is like the, you know, the, I always can tell the speakers that did not do their homework because the speaker mm -hmm. will walk in and she goes, oh yeah, you know, the wedding, you know, we're about to get into wedding season, you know, and, and their wedding season is like, end of October, November through like April, you know, and then it gets hot as hell there and yeah. the, the weddings, you know, so these people would come in and be talking to them and they would instantly get, you know, no credibility because they're not hip to what, you know, is, is different, you know, and then I got I was in Atlanta and I was told, you know, an average size wedding in Atlanta is over 200 people, you know, and that, you know, in Northern California, it's like 120 you know, so it's just, it's just very interesting in how everyone does things and the traditions. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's to me, and I, I don't know why I, I'm a little bit of a wedding geek. Um, so I, I really enjoy learning about all the way, the way, the way the wedding world works, you know, in, in all around our country, because it's so different, even though we're all in our little bubble. And I, I really think until you get out of your bubble and really see it differently, you really don't understand 
Mm -mm. You know, there's more to it than just what's in, in our little bubble, you know? Yeah. It's so, so different. That's one thing I never understood how, like, I know the knot puts out a lot of great information and, but one thing I, I never really got it because some of my clients, I remember I was teaching a class in New York a couple of years ago and I was in the middle of teaching a class and they had just released all over social media, the average budget brides and grooms spend every year. And then I had several text messages and um, just emails and, well, Angela, why am I not spending $33,000? i am like, are you serious? Like, first off, you're not having an average wedding. Second off, you don't have an average planner. Thirdly, you're getting married at the most expensive venue in Nashville, downtown, real estate, zip code matters, and not educating the couples on... Okay, so what does thirty thousand ish dollars get you, and what region are you in, <laughs> and are, are we talking daytime, nighttime, seated dinner, buffet, barbecue, open bar, ticketed bar, cash bar, band, DJ? I mean, there's just so many variables. I'm like, where are they getting this information because it's misguiding? I've never done a wedding under thirty thousand in all my years. I, I don't know how I, now if we have 20 guests, but most people who hire a planner, it's, I mean, it's a mini production behind the scenes. So I just, I don't understand like why it's not broken down by region and given more information. It's like, how do people come up with this? Do you know where they're getting it from? Cause I don't <laughs> Well, they, they do a survey they, or they, they claim they do a survey and, you know, but I think what it is, is, you know, they're taking in the middle of, you know, even, even, even get, get where I am, I'm, I'm the last city in the Bay area, you know, and then once you go East in California, you know, away from my city, you get in central California, uh, central California mm -hmm. and in central California, from central California to where I am, you could probably do a wedding for $30,000 over there mm -hmm. and have a pretty nice little wedding, but it's not going to be of the grand scale that the weddings are over here in the wine, you know, in my little wine country, you know, and then you take, my wine country is about half the price, if not like a third of the price of a wedding in Napa, mm -hmm. you know, and Napa is only an hour and 10 minutes north of me, you know? And so it just, it's, it's kind of like location where you are and you know, it, it would be nice yeah. for if, if they would give you real things, but even, even like one of the most popular venues in my area, I mean, on a Saturday night, you're not walking in their door for less than thirty thousand know, dollars, and that's just the venue, just yeah. the venue. You know, so most brides in that at that venue are spending, you know, anywhere from eighty to one hundred twenty thousand dollars on their wedding. Mm -hmm. you know? But it's, you know, but that venue, I'll say this: they do a good job in, in the in the initial tour, and they give ranges. So that's, you know, we started doing that on our website. Mm -hmm. You know. The, you're going to spend about this much to this much and most clients spend that much, mm -hmm. you know, and we kind of have a range on our website and that I noticed when we started adding that, that helped. And I know these venues are now starting to do that. You, you know, giving them real, real numbers when they're going in, cause you're going to, you're going to weed out the ones that can't afford it and you're going to get the ones that can, you know, and, and so even though you may get less increase, but you're going to get, you're going to get more book business in the end. Yeah. So. And pre-qualify better. <laughs> Yeah. So you're no, not wasting yeah. your time with people who don't, who really truly cannot afford some of the services that you're offering. And that's okay. Like you're not for everybody. Oh, um, and, and that's the big thing. Once people really realize that you're not for everyone and not everyone is my client, then, then you're going to be more successful in, yeah. in, in the wedding industry. So yeah. it's just like, you no, know, this is, you know, and it, it, every once in a while I'll be doing a wedding. I'm like, they're the, they're not my client. I, I can already tell. Mm -hmm. You just kind of know sometimes. Well, Kevin, I've loved chatting with you today. Um, can you tell our listeners where they can find you if they want to see your beautiful work or if they have any questions? Sure. Well, you can go to fantasysound.com or you can email me at kevin at fantasysound.com. And I'm on, you know, Facebook and Instagram and all those things too. I'm not really good at it. So it's mainly photos of my kids and socks. I'm big on socks. So Oh, you guys have some really beautiful well, on fantasy sound. Yeah. No, the girls do a good job. I meant if you went to my personal oh. Instagram. <laughs> I'm not as good. 
on fantasy I gotta get better. That's something I think that's going to be my New Year's resolution is to get better at social media. So. But it's it's just ever changing. It's really hard to keep up. <laughs> I don't well, just, I don't want to be an oversharer. I think that's where. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and sometimes it's like, I'm like, do people really care about that? Some of the things that people really care about, I'm like shocked. But anyway. Well, um, so thank you so much again for all of your time and thank you to our listeners and be sure to check out fantasysound.com and look at Kevin and his team's beautiful work. I hope that everyone has a wonderful day and catch us on the next episode of Weddings Unveiled. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends and I am so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list. And if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.